Guys, welcome back to the channel, to Coffee and Cartridges. Today we're just gonna talk about a variety of different issues. Some are controversial and all involve shooting, scopes, guns, cartridges, um, brands, some really interesting topics. A lot of this has come from comments I've received and then some of it's just rolling around in my head and I wanted to make a video on some of these things. So get you some coffee, let's sit down and just talk about some interesting things. And by the way, happy Father's Day to all the fathers watching this out there. The first topic today I want to talk about is good experiences versus bad experiences. Having a channel and reading a lot of comments from a lot of different people from all over the world can be eye-opening. And it's actually kind of funny at times because people have such dramatically different experiences. I'm pretty sure that I've heard a comment, good or bad, about everything. <laughs> Whether it's a rifle, whether it's a brand, whether it's a bullet, a product, on certain bullets like Federal Terminal Ascent. Overall, it's just a bullet that's pretty popular. Um, you can really only get it in factory ammo. It, it is hard to get, you know, the reloading components. Um, I recently got some and I loaded them up, but they're very hard to get. But overall, a pretty well liked bullet. And I've had people tell me, you know, they've killed. 12 elk with it and five deer and caribou and they don't take more than a step and it's just really been an incredible bullet and then I've had people say that it's the worst bullet <laughs> they've ever shot that they've heard stories and they've seen it for themselves that it breaks apart or it does this or it does that and it's the worst bullet and they'll never go back to it and I'm not discounting either person and so I don't doubt them. One person's had some good experiences with a particular bullet. One person's had some bad experiences with a particular bullet. It's just amazing. I'll talk about a bullet and then I'll have someone tell me how it's never failed them and it's the greatest bullet they've ever used. And then another person will tell me it's the literal worst bullet they've ever used. <laughs> Use anything except for that bullet. And it's just amazing the dramatic differences. You're, you talk about a certain rifle, like Savage Rifles, you'll have a, certain people say uh, they're always accurate. In fact, I hear that quite a bit. You know, they're very accurate rifles and they're really good. And you'll have certain people say that they're the best rifles they've ever had, the most accurate out of the box. And then other people say, I've had, you know, 12 Savage Rifles and all of them were duds and all of them were lemons and they were terrible and I'll never get a Savage Rifle again. <laughs> Okay, it's the same with scopes, it's the same with products. I made a reloading video and someone commented about Hornady One Shot and all these terrible things that it does to your brass. And I, I just simply commented back, I've been using it for a long time. <laughs> None of that's ever happened. Once again, I'm not discounting their comment. It could, they could have had a bad experience but I'm literally using the product on a daily basis. And then they tell me that it will do, ter it will do things, terrible things. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it won't. It's very interesting to, to read the comments. And I love reading the comments and 99.9% .9 of the comments are civil, awesome comments, just offering a perspective or their experience. But it is interesting to see such widely differing views. <laughs> that, love and hate for the same product. Sometimes I think we had one bad experience and then we started searching internet forums and discovered some other people have as well. And then we come up with the idea that that product or rifle or bullet is horrible. But here's the thing, if you searched the internet to come up with positive, you know, stories, you could find it too. <laughs> It's the same way with reviews to a degree. I mean, you want to hear a positive review, it's out there about a product. You want to hear a negative one, it's out there about a product. We're all just human beings and I'm no different. 
if I buy something and it doesn't work, I'm pretty well done with that brand and I'll go with something else. And if I buy something and it works great, then I'm a fan and I'll buy more. It's just human nature. Once in a while, you'll get a consensus where just about everyone agrees that something is terrible or something is really good, but very rarely does that happen. And I just thought it'd be interesting to talk about it. Um, and especially just reading comments that, wow, you love that, you hate that. It's the greatest thing you've ever used. It's the worst thing you've ever used. <laughs> kind of funny. And then I also get comments about, I'll never buy that, it's made from China. And that one I do get. In a perfect world, I probably wouldn't either. Um, you know, if, if I could buy everything American made and it was reasonably priced, I probably would avoid certain places too. And so that one I totally get, but I've always been a proponent of good value. Um, you go back to the very first video that I've ever done on this channel about guns to this day, that's been a consistent theme. It's, you know, getting the most bang for your buck, the most efficient cartridges, most efficient, you know, buy on something. Uh, and I mainly like that because I just haven't had a lot of money in my life. And, and so I've never been able to buy expensive rifles, ex expensive scopes, go on, you know, you know, trips to Africa. I've just never been able to do stuff like that. Maybe in the future, but I've always had limited funds, limited time and had to make the best with my time I could, or had to get the best value for what little money I had. And so sometimes that's not American made. You know, you look at the scope brand Arkin. They are an American company, but their stuff is made over in China. That Arkin EPL4, I believe is what I have, is an amazing scope. It's really, really good. And for the amount of money you're putting into it, it's incredible. And you compare that to an American made scope, like a loophole, for instance, um, that would have all the same features, the same glass quality, the same turret quality. It's going to be two or three times more. And so I get it. You, you, you want to stick with the American products. And I agree with that generally speaking, but when I have limited money and I can get a three times better scope for the same price, I'm probably going to do that. We get hung up on brands um, and I, and we're all like this and I'm no exception. I become loyal to brands just like anybody else. Cause I got it, had a good experience or they had good customer service and I just simply like the company. So nothing wrong with it. Very normal, but sometimes certain brands are overpriced, you know, I can think of some really, really good companies like Weatherby, Nosler, Leupold, great companies, great products. They're overpriced. <laughs> Nosler in particular, man, they got great bullets. I, it's like I, quality, just, just good quality, right? Partitions are way too expensive. I think the Acubons are too expensive too. Now, I know that not all bullets are made in the same process, right? So to put that partition in the bullet might, uh, the, the manufacturing process of it might make it just a little bit more expensive to make. Okay. That's, that's fine. I'm, I'm not saying all bullets should cost the same, but when, but to buy 50 bullets of partition, you're spending 75 bucks. And I mean, just the bullet, I'm not talking about ammo. It's a Spitzer soft pointed bullet really with a partition in it. It's well designed and it performs very well. It has a great track record. Should it cost what it costs? No. The Acubons are more reasonable, but man, they're overpriced too. I would just say that. And it's not just Nosler. I'm not just picking on Nosler. There's other brands that are way too expensive as well, but just Nosler jumps out to me. Partitions too expensive. Acubons too expensive. You might think the Acubon long ranges are too expensive. They're actually cheaper than Acubon. What it is is you always get the Acubon long ranges in boxes of a hundred 
and then you get the Acubons, usually in boxes of 50. So you're actually paying a lot more per bullet for the standard Acubon. You have good experience with them and you've killed a lot of animals. You're probably thinking, well, who cares? I don't care if I have to pay a little bit more. I know it's a good bullet. Awesome. The Spear Impact bullets out there, it's much cheaper probably would lean more toward the spear impact just be if it's the same if it's the caliber and the bullet weight that i wanted and i can get it just because it's such a better value and it performs pretty much the same but there's definitely things about the acubon especially the availability and the variety of different bullet weights and calibers that make it stand out now i talked about this recently on a video but i compare the vortex crossfire 2 to the loophole VX Freedom. One was 3 by 9 by 40 the, the loophole. And then the Vortex, I believe, is 4 by 12 by 44. The Vortex has much better turrets than the Freedom. They a more tactile click. Um, they feel better. They're just, in all ways, the turrets are better. I haven't done extensive testing, so I'm just going to say that the tracking is good on both. I'm not, you know, I haven't really put them to the test. So let's just say for all intents and purposes, the tracking is the same, probably the same glass coming out of the same factory and probably not in America, but I'd say glass quality is the same, but man, the turrets, it's night and day. The features you get, you're, you're getting a higher magnification, you know, four by 12, a, bigger objective lens, 44 versus 40. You get a dead hold BDC reticule, which is kind of like the loophole Boone and Crockett reticule. But the VX Freedom, at least the one I have that's 300 bucks, has a hump plex. It's very similar to a duplex. Doesn't have any kind of special reticule. So you're getting a very basic reticule, way worse turrets, everything else pretty much the same a lower magnification, smaller scope, and you're paying double the price. The VX Freedom is 300 bucks, and the Crossfire 2 is 160. And if you just simply got like a four by 12 by 44 loophole with the Boone and Crockett reticule, just to make it more apples to apples, probably gonna be four to 500 bucks. And that's still with the turrets not being as good. All scope companies have cheap scopes and nice scopes. And I know like some of the, the VX3, the VX5, the VX6, the Mark series, there's some incredibly awesome loopholes. And there's probably some dud vortexes, but I'm just giving you a comparison of two that are kind of in the same class. One's almost double the price and it's not as good. By the way, both scopes have the exact same warranty. Loophole's a great company. I think they have probably better quality control than what Vortex does. And a great name, a great reputation. But I'm just telling you that that VX Freedom is overpriced. That should be about a $150 scope. Now, let me just throw something out there. The fact that Vortex has this incredible warranty, Burris has a lifetime warranty, Arkin has a lifetime warranty. And if you notice all these new scope companies, they're all having unconditional lifetime warranties, not all of them, but a lot of them. Well, the credit for that goes to Lupul. They were really the first one to offer that awesome warranty. So got to give them credit there that they've kind of shifted the industry through competition to where we're getting a better warranty in a lot of scopes. And then I mentioned Weatherby. Great company, great cartridges, great rifles, great ammo. Overpriced, especially on their ammo. I don't I don't think their guns are really overpriced. I, I think you're getting a lot with that Mark V. So I don't really, I'm not saying it's dramatically overpriced. The Vanguards are a great value. So I don't think their guns are so much overpriced. Their ammo is overpriced. <laughs> Big time. Now I definitely get it. It's proprietary cartridges that very few, if anyone else, loads for them. And if you want ammo for a particular Weatherby cartridge, you're probably going to have to go through Weatherby. So they've kind of got their own market cornered and it is good quality ammo. So, but it, man, it's overpriced. <laughs> so some of our favorite brands, you know, Weatherby, Nosler, and Leupold are fantastic brands, but they can overprice things. And so my philosophy, generally speaking, is I just go with what the best bang for the buck is, you know? 
So I've got several Savage rifles. They're definitely the ones I have, the Axis and the, and the 11 and some rifles like that are definitely on the low end, okay? They're nothing spectacular, but man, they're a good shooting rifle for the price. I like Remington 700s. I like Model 70s. I've never had one, but I, I love Sockos. I flirted with getting a Tika many times, never have done it. I'm flirting tremendously here recently with getting a Bergara. Man, they're, the actions are so smooth. Point being, I like a lot of rifles. I don't just like cheap Savages. And, and I know that there's some high-end Savages too. But the point is, you can really get a good rifle for a cheap price with a Savage. Same with a Ruger. Uh, they offer some great prices. And not just them. The Winchester XPR, the CVA Cascade. I mean, there's some really good buys out there. All my life, I've really bought what I could afford. And what I felt like was the best bang for the buck. I'd watch a lot of reviews. I'd read a lot of forums. I'd read a lot of articles, and I would try to get a perspective from both sides, negative and positive, and then come up with what I thought was, for the money, gonna give me the best buy. You know, a $1,500 Model 70, or $2,500 X-Bolt Pro, or Weatherby Deluxe Mark V, just out of my price range. If I do have that much money, I really need to spend it on something else. Now, hopefully in my life, that changes. I'm hoping that as my life goes on, I will have more money to spend on things that are a little bit nicer. But just the truth of the matter is I haven't been able to. But I guess that brings me to my next point. What do you consider your rifle collection to be? Is it a collection, like a curated collection that you keep, you know, in pristine condition? You, you definitely know the monetary value you don't use them, or at least very rarely, you definitely don't take them hunting because you want to keep them in perfect mint condition because it's a collector's piece to you. Um, and you're always looking to procure that next rifle to add to that collection. Nothing wrong with that, that's, that's cool. Or are you more like me and your rifle collection is more of a tool set? <laughs> They're just tools. And I don't want a tool that isn't going to work for sure. I definitely want a good tool that's going to work. But maybe I can get, you know, a Stanley <laughs> instead of a Snap-on. Maybe I can get a little bit cheaper tool that's still got a great warranty, still got a great track record, and for half the price. And so my rifle collection, at, at least at, at this date, at the day of filming of this video, it's all on the cheaper side because I feel like I've got really effective tools that I can use that are good, that were a good value and give me good performance. And yet, if I put a scratch into them, it's okay. Even my 65284, which is a custom gun, it was not cheap, but I slowly built it. I bought an old Mauser with, they did not have matching serial numbers, but the action was real nice and smooth. I think I paid $350 for it. And then I had a gunsmith drill and tap it. And then I had a gunsmith put a different bolt handle on it. And then I had this done and that done. And then eventually I bought a new barrel, a four or $500 barrel, and, put, and had that put on. And then eventually I bought a new stock. And so even the more expensive rifles that I have, I bought them cheap and I slowly could work on them. But there is no right answer to that. But what do you consider your collection to be? Is, is your rifle collection like, I'm gonna use the heck out of these guns and they're just tools to me? Or is it they are my most prized possessions and I would never take them hunting or something like that? No right or wrong answer, but I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And I mentioned loophole just a little bit ago. I wanna talk about scopes here as I'm ending this video. When I am, looking at scopes there's some things that i always look for now even though i have scopes that are first focal plane typically speaking i want second focal plane i think most people nowadays are like oh no no you have to get first focal plane that's the better but you really need to look at the application if you're just simply hunting 
you know, or shooting it off a bench at 100 yards or something, you probably don't want first focal plane. You know, your first focal plane, of course, it's set up so that the hash marks always apply and your holdover is always accurate. So if you figure out your dope and you know exactly all your stuff for the ballistics calculator and you know that one holdover hash mark means this many minutes of angle or this many mils, that doesn't change no matter what magnification that you're at. So whether you're at, you know, five magnification or 25, those hash marks are the same. And that can be really cool for a long range target shooter. And that's all they're doing with the rifle. If that's all that you're doing with the rifle. Fantastic. Really, that's only going to apply when you've got it zoomed all the way in, you know, and you can clearly see it. But when you have it, you know, back to like three, four or five power, you can barely see it. In fact, the whole Christmas tree reticule looks like a dot in the center of the field of view. Now, if you get a illuminated red dot in the middle of your first focal plane, that can kind of fix that. But the point is I don't want a first focal plane. <laughs> I have a couple and I've gotten used to them and they're great for certain applications. But generally speaking, I want second focal plane. It's the same with minute of angle versus mill. You know, mill is the new, the, the more popular one to, to go with now. Everyone in America has seemed to start going away from minute of angle and going toward mill, which is fine. And I do see how it could be less complicated at say a thousand yards because your mills, because your mills are going by the number 10 or a 10th of a mill. And so at a thousand yards, it could be maybe more simple to dial and stuff like that. But I'm used to minute of angle and I bore sight at 25 yards and I sight my guns in at a hundred yards. And then I'm pretty well not going to make a shot past 400 yards for hunting unless I'm in a very specific circumstance and a lot of things are perfect, pretty much 400 is the limit. So 25, 100, 400, it all goes perfectly with minute of angle and quarter clicks and all that. And so when I'm looking for a scope, I'm always the opposite of most people. I'm looking for minute of angle and I'm looking for second focal plane. By the way, minute of angle is actually more precise. It doesn't really matter if you got a range finder and ballistics calculator, it's, it doesn't matter, but I'm just telling you it's a fact. The minute of angle is actually a little bit more precise of a metric and a calculation. I also do not like Christmas tree reticules. <laughs> um, I do want something besides just a duplex. I don't like just a duplex. What I want is a duplex with very thin crosshairs. I, I want to be able to see the crosshairs, but I don't want them to be blocking anything. And then I want just a couple hash marks going down, you know, just a couple holdover marks. That's kind of what I like. Maybe a mark or two to the right or left for like one windage mark, but I don't want a busy reticule but I want just a little bit more than, you know, duplex. So that's my preferences when I'm looking at a scope. Um, go with what you want. Don't worry about what the pressures are in an industry or what's hot. Same with cartridges. The 6.5 Creedmoor became the most popular thing of all time. Really, it became overhyped. And then we kind of reverted back and the pendulum swung to the point now it's kind of hated, but in reality, it's a good cartridge. We it just got overhyped. The seven PRC at the moment's kind of in that same boat. It came out and it's real popular and then it got overhyped and now it's starting to come back to reality and people are realizing that other cartridges are just as good, if not better, but you know, we all have preferences. We're all humans buy what you want to buy. If you want to spend a lot of money on something, go for it. If you've had good experiences with something, don't let anyone else talk you out of it. You have certain preferences in a product, but everyone else seems to disagree with you. Stick with what you like, but understand we're, we're all different. Understand your preferences, your experiences probably won't match mine. And also your applications aren't going to match mine. We could all be a little bit respectful to each other. 
This has just been some real talk. Um, that's what this channel is about. I'm not trying to impress any certain company. I'm just going to be real with you and down to earth. And that's what you're going to get from this channel. I will continue to have coffee and cartridges. Usually we'll have more of a specific approach to a specific cartridge or a cartridge comparison or cartridge matchup. This is a little bit different uh, video, but usually that's the case. We'll have cartridge comparisons. And then also I got my show, the rifles reloading in the range where I go out and just test products, especially reloading bullets and powders and things like that. So subscribe if you haven't already, more videos like that will be coming out. Give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment. You can tell me what your favorite brands are. You can tell me the thing, where I've went right or where I've went wrong. It's okay. I love reading them. Hopefully you've had a great day and until next time, take care.